Well, here's the crux. Xi Jinping knows how to have his way. At home, he uses his cozy club. Outside, he uses his checkbook. This story is about the second tool of Xi Jinping, the money that he uses to lay the debt trap. In July this year, we reported how Nepal was grounding six Chinese planes. The Nepal Airlines had bought them back in 2012, but it can no longer afford to keep these planes in the air. The reason is that they cost too much. Now, these planes were bought as part of a deal with China. There was the promise of a gift. The agreement was fairly simple. Nepal will buy six planes from China. China will give two more planes as gifts. Now, Vion has learned that the agreement was not so simple after all. It was a deal that only benefited China. The agreement was signed in the year 2012 under Prime Minister Babu Ram Bhattarai. Nepal bought these planes through Chinese funding. 60% of the funding came from China's Exim Bank. The remaining 40% was in the form of a grant, a subsidy from China, you could say. The value of the deal was 6.6 .6 billion Nepali rupees. That's more than $50 million as of today. The term of the loan was 20 years. The interest rate, 1.5%. Now, the Chinese planes are grounded and Nepal is stuck with the liability. The list of problems, we can tell you, is fairly long. The operating costs, the insurance of the plane, they're too high. The spares are not available. When they are available, they're too costly. The spares are sold at a markup of 50 to 70 percent. Training pilots to fly Chinese planes also costs a lot, 50 percent more than what airlines usually pay. So Nepal Airlines had no option but to ground the planes. What about the Chinese loan? Can they dismiss the loan too? Will the airline still have to pay the installments? Can it return the planes? These questions need to be answered by the government of Nepal. But the government of Nepal is busy with more important things, like establishing the birthplace of Lord Bud. The Oli government is fighting over the legacy of Bud. It began with a statement by India's External Affairs Minister S.J. Shankar. He described the Bud as one of the two greatest Indians the other being Mahatma Gandhi. The minister's point was fairly simple. It was a reference to India's shared heritage with Nepal. But Kathmandu saw it as something else. It was outraged. Nepal's foreign ministry shot of a statement. It said that it's undeniable that Gautam Buddh was born in Nepal, Nepal's Lumbini as the birthplace of Buddh and the fountain of Buddhism. But Nepal's desperate attempt to trigger yet another diplomatic row with India turned out to be a non-starter. New Delhi issued a statement soon after Nepal, confirming that there is no doubt over the birthplace of the Buddh. Such is the desperation of Nepal. The only government is looking for ways to pick a fight with India. First, it laid claim over three Indian territories. Then the Prime Minister of Nepal said that Lord Ram was born in Nepal, that he was a Nepali. Now he wants to own the legacy of Lord Buddh, while China continues to lay the groundwork to repossess Nepal's assets. Nepal has not said anything about China's claims on Mount Everest, by the way. And despite the bitterness in the relationship, India remains steady in its support for Nepal. The Indian Army has gifted 10 ventilators to the Nepal Army. They were handed over on Sunday with no strings attached.